This is lesson 10.5, and today we're going to talk about two topics. The first thing is called displacement, the second topic is called density. So hopefully all of you can kind of relate to a situation like this right here. We have some root beer in a cup, and what goes better with root beer than some ice cream? You take that ice cream and you put it inside the cup, and what will happen to the root beer? And hopefully what you're thinking is, well, when I put the ice cream in, the root beer will rise up. Because the, the point being is that the, the ice cream itself takes up space or volume inside the cup and displaces the root beer, causing it to rise. So, uh, you know, all the things that we've been finding volume of are things that are nice, you know, cubes, cones, cylinders. Uh, pyramids, things like that, but wh what happens if you have something that's odd, like this shape right here? This happens to be Plymouth Rock. If you go out to Massachusetts, you can find it still there on the beach. Uh, you know, how do you find the volume of something like that? Well, the idea is, is that you can take a container like this right here, and what you can do is, is you can go ahead and grab a hold of the rock, I forgot to mention that, you know, we got this full of water here. And then you take the rock and you put it in the water. And what will happen is, is that the water level will rise. And so the thinking is, is that this slice of water, from the original water height to where it is now, represents the volume of the rock. So if you can find the volume of that slice of water right here, then you will find the volume of that rock. That is called displacement. And that is how you find volume of all these shapes that are odd. So here's an example right here. So we have uh, a cube that's full of water. It measures 10 centimeters by 15 centimeters. Here we have a little stone that we put in there, uh, 10 centimeters by 15 centimeters. So it's the same. Uh, container that we had over here. When the rock goes in, the water level rises by two centimeters right here. And what that means is if we can find the volume of this little slice of water right here, then we will have the volume of that rock. Now a lot of people say, hey wait a minute, I didn't know how high the water was to start with, so that seems to be a stumbling block. But it doesn't matter because all we're interested in is what is the volume of the slice of water, or how far the water went up by. So volume is always area of the base, uh, which I use a capital V for, times the height. And so in this case, the base is a rectangle, so it's 10 by 15, and the height is 2. And if you multiply all that out, that turns out to be 300, and my units here are centimeters, so it's cubic centimeters. There you go, there's how you use displacement. Now, the second topic is, is kind of related to this, and it has to do with something called density. So if you take a look, first of all, at this table right here, you will see a bunch of precious metals, aluminum, copper, gold, lead, platinum, potassium, silver, sodium, nickel, and lithium. And as it turns out, scientists have discovered that each of these metals has a specific density uh, that only that metal has. And so if you can figure out the density of an object, you can figure out what metal you have. And what does this have to do with volume? Well, I'm glad you're wondering because the formula for density is mass times volume. Sorry, mass divided by volume. That'll give you your density. And uh, for uh, some, making things more simplistic, we can think of mass as being uh, the weight of something here on Earth. And uh, we calculate volume the way we always have. So let's, let's try this little problem here. It says a clump of metal weighing 351.4 grams is dropped into a cylindrical container, causing the water level to rise 1.1 centimeters. The radius of the base of the container is 3 centimeters. What's the density of the metal? Let's mark up this drawing a little bit here. Find out that the radius is 3 centimeters. And I don't know, there was a water level right here. And when you put the rock inside there, like this, it turns out that the, the water level went up 1.1 centimeters. 
So we're interested in finding out the volume of this bit of water because that would represent a rock there. So let's go ahead and uh, calculate the area of the base times the height, that's volume. The area of the base is uh, pi r squared times the height. And in this case, the radius is 3. And the height would be 1.1. And if you go ahead and multiply that out, you get 9.9 .9 pi. And we're going to go ahead and use that to calculate uh, what our density is. That turns out to be 31.086. All right, and so that'd be cubic centimeters. And so we need to follow our formula for uh, density here and so we take the mass and we divide by the volume so in this case the mass is 351.4 so let's just write that in here and density equals mass over volume so density equals 351.4 divided by 31.086 so let's just I've got a calculator in my hand here and let's just try that out and I get a density of 11.3 just over that. Now, if you go back up here and you start looking through the chart and you want to identify which one, start looking at you know all these numbers here and here. And if you look, 11.3 is right there. 11.3 grams per cubic centimeter. And so this mystery rock right here that we were looking for uh, uh, is turns out to be lead. Alright, so that's a demonstration of how to use that formula. You're gonna have some problems that you can work out uh, based on that. Uh, it's also in your book. Go ahead and try the practice problems and then try your uh, assignment for the day. Thank you.